Hello and welcome to By the Numbers. I'm FMT. I hope you're all doing well. It's only July. It's this first episode of season 11. I was kind of tempted just to stop recording really at, at season 10. It's a nice, nice round number before we get to FM21, but we've got plenty of time and obviously now we're just going to Europe, which is a nice point to kind of be picking up on. And that's why we're back in July, because of the fact that we are in Europe, in the very first qualifying round of the Euro 2 Cup, which is what the Euro Conference or the Euro Vars, whatever it's called. Um, that's where we are. Uh, but there's the potential for about 200 grand to be made just by playing in these matches. Um, plus, whatever we get from ticketing, I guess. I'll show you who we're playing in a second. Um, and we'll go through that and we'll play probably both legs. Um, in this one, so it might be slightly longer because we're going to do transfers and two matches. Transfer wise, we've got good news, we've got bad news. You saw some of the bad news there briefly. So, good news. We've got Gareth Beggs in. He looks good. Uh, he's rated more highly than all of our other strikers. Um, so, he's going to swap a uh, swap slot straight into the team. And you can see there, he's meant to be quite good at being a false nine. Um, Everyone else who played in the false line position has not been that good at it in terms of their role, which obviously this doesn't make a huge difference. It's more about their attributes than anything else, but actually the attributes for this fit better. In fact, the only one that he's got below 10, no, he's got two below 10. He's got a nine for anticipation and an eight for passing there, but otherwise pretty good. Matt McGee signed, which we knew he was going to do anyway, which is good. Um, he's had a good run with us. It's not been as prolific as others, but he's, he's added a little touch of class there. This signing is another good signing. So Reese Miller we got, and I think he was released from Lan or Linfield, one of the, yeah, there we go. Released from Linfield, and you can see he's actually played quite a lot of Premiership, or Danks Bank Premier, I should say, matches. Um, a reasonable amount of clean sheets as well in there. He looks pretty good. Already rated as being better than our other options. He's going to slot straight in. He's 22. We've managed to tie him up for three years. He's cost us a bit, but it's worth it, I think. Uh, we brought in Marty Young as a kind of youth prospect. So I think he's in our reserves, uh, but he was playing in the uh, Irish uh, under 20s, I think. Um, so he looks like he might be all right. Brought him in for nothing. Uh, Ashley McLaughlin, again, likewise, six foot three defender. Good tackling, so a few areas to work on for him. Uh, good jumping reach there. He could be quite good in the future, so he's got some cover there. Uh, Stuart Heaney we've got as kind of cover for that left back or left wing back uh, position. Uh, but we actually, he might go straight into that uh, position. And then Devlin and McIntyre are going to be fighting out as cover. Um, but it does mean we've got more options there. Uh, ben Mackle. Who's six foot four defender who looks reasonable as well. He's rated, uh, I think, as being a championship standard, but could well be good Premiership prospect. I think. Yep, so he could be Premier level. Um, and he's rated reasonably highly. Dean Dykes, uh, Irish goalkeeper, who's got some potential, who's gone into our reserve team. And then Tommy McCallion, we've got in on loan just to shore up some of our midfield kind of options. Uh, John Hughes has left. Um, and if we go to release players, you can see Paddy McCallion has also gone. Um, Harry Edgar, Peter Boyce. He's still quite good, but. He just didn't get in. I don't think he got any games last season. He just got one or something like that. Now, technically, no no games last season. Um, so it's time for him to go. Scott Smith and Scott Williamson have gone. Williamson did well for us, really, over a few seasons, but then just fell out of favour when we got Devlin and McIntyre. McGovern, likewise, has been with us for a little bit. Uh, we learned him out and everything, but he just didn't didn't fight his way back into the team. Ronnie McDonald has gone, but that's okay because we've got better keepers now. Uh, this is one of the bits of bad news. Jude Key left, um, and I just couldn't get him to agree to stay. Like, I could afford to, I think, almost double his wage. Um, he's just not interested. 
really isn't interested, even though you know, he played almost all of last season, suspensions and injuries permitting. And then we've got a couple of other players who've left there. So the bad, that first bit of bad news is Jude Key going. Uh, the other bit of bad news is that Alan O'Connor, our striker from last season, um, who is David Personnel, and also likes Ronnie Hot Dogs and like, likes the team, will come back to us on loan. So Lan will let him if we pay some of his wage. Um, Lan are quite happy for him to come to us. In fact, the Lan manager really loves us because we played um, O'Connor and McGee so often. Um, to a good relationship with them, so they're ha quite happy for him to come to us, but he just won't accept it. I think he wants to try and see if he can break through um, into the Lan squad, which will be a bit tricky, but he is good. Got 40 goals in 79 um, or 78 league appearances for us, um, and that's just league league goals. Um, so yeah, this is a bit sad that we've not got Alan O'Connor, but we could pick him back up again some of the time. So the squad's looking all right. Um, got goalkeeping options. We've got a bit of a decision to make in central defence in terms of who's going to partner Matt, uh, Matt McVeigh, um, whether Heaney's going to come in on instead of Devlin on that left hand side, um, what our kind of combination up front is going to be. It looks like it's going to be Beggs, Greg, and McGee, um, which I just like the sound of actually. I think it's going to have to be Beggs, Meg, and McGee, isn't it? So yeah, um, schedule-wise, best placed first qualifying round is where we are, and we are playing Shrek from Armenia. They have no players that we can see, so we have absolutely no idea what kind of standard they're going to be. We could be breezing past them, um, we could get stuffed, we don't know. And in the second round, if we do somehow get through, then we're going to be against Sudova or Vaduz or FC Vaduz. Uh, Sudova is uh, Lithuania and Vaduz is Liechtenstein. So I think Vaduz actually, they play in Switzerland, um, but they represent Liechtenstein, like FC Andorra play in Spain, but represent Andorra. So Vaduz, I think they play as the Liechtenstein team in Liechtenstein Cup or something, and this is how they qualify for the Euro Cup. Um, they're a good challenge. If you can take over them, they're a good challenge, but look how much they're worth. They're, they're much, much better in that sense. So yeah, we've got Chirac to play against now. And something I just want to check before we do, so the first thing is, is our finances. So we're at 38 because of sponsorship and TV money and whatnot. Season tickets have also gone through. Um, you can see gate receipts are at 400 pounds this month. I just want to come back and check this after we play Chirac because we are playing them um, at Windsor Park which has a capacity of 18,000 because presumably Glen Park or Glen Road what's it called? Glen Road. It's only got a capacity for a thousand so it doesn't meet the requirements so we're uh, going to the uh, we're still staying in Belfast actually it's not, not far away. Right clear. The issue kind of is for us is that Windsor Park, as well as being uh, the stadium for the national side, is a stadium for Linfield, our kind of historic rivals. Right, Reese Miller's going to go straight in. I got Ben Taylor to stay on loan as well, so I think between Miller, Taylor and McCulloch, we're, we're alright. Central defender here, we're going to have Mac McVeigh. Hazen Murray, apparently is really good there, but if we played him there, who we play in the ball winning midfielder position? Um, apparently, Tommy McCallion. Although not for this match because of uh, the fact he's not registered. Um, let's play someone else there. So we've got to, we're going to play Ben Mackle. Okay. Uh, Darren Strain. So we've had Darren Strain for a while. It's not going to be McGinn. It's not terrible, but physically he's not quite there. Brendan Dallas. I've been giving uh, Brendan opportunities, but I think we're still trying to blood him in, really. Or Ryan Robinson. Hmm. Do we want to go any further down than that? I think Ben Mackle's going to get the nod. We'll see how that goes. On the right, we're still going to play Greg. Um, on the left, 
I think we kind of have to play Stuart Heaney when we look at him like that. In the register position, uh, we're going to play Downey because he's been with the club for so long, but I might change that to Burn. Um, Aidan Murray. Where's Bar? It's all the way up here. Bar up there. Target Man. It's actually tricky. So Gareth Beggs. 5'8 could be a target man, but we think actually he might be a better false nine. So we could put him there. Pressing forward, I think it's going to have to be McGee. No, it's not going to be McGee. What am I talking about? It should be Eddie Gregg, shouldn't it? But McGee apparently is rated as being better. Sorry, this episode's going to go on forever, isn't it? Um, no, we'll go Gregg. And Target Man, apparently it's McGee. So is it going to be Carl Brown instead? Let's give McGee a go there. He's not quite what we want, but we'll see. McCulloch, Dallas, um, Devlin, Burn. Got one more. What have I done? Some extra there. So Bingham's not making it. Cockroft's not making it currently. I think we're going to have to go with that. We're a bit limited there. Um, save it just in case anything horrible happens. Because I don't think I've actually saved it in a little while. I can see how slow my computer's being. It is like an 11 season file now. Um, that's got a little bit bigger. So let's see how we do. Let's give the squad numbers. I'm going to give Beggs 10. Who's currently 10? I can't. It's going to have to be that. Sorry, Beggs. You are a better 10 than Brown. So I would, I would move that if I thought about it. Right then. I'm going for a 4 2 3 1. Can see nothing about any of these players. So this is a real kind of mystery match. He makes us stronger there. We might just play in defence. Maybe he'll be a revelation in defence. We've got options. Right, Greg picks it up. Off to Downey, off to Barr. To Greg, back to Downey. Heaney. Ooh. There we go, that's not a bad debut. I mean, 28 minutes in. Uh, 28 minutes in, 28 seconds in. And he just kind of drifted in. I think Chirac might be terrible. Yeah, look at that. Vicious left peg. Um, extended with my gun to key. Let's make sure we fit both these matches in. If we start to struggle or tactically things need dealing with, we'll go back to extended. But I've seen this tactic enough to know how it should be working. Come on, get the ball back. Don't let them into this. That is a weird scissor tackle. Oh, that was a very good. I mean, was it very good? Or was it poor keeping? Back it goes. The keeper didn't look like he moved. Well, he moved after, didn't he? Yeah, there we go. It's already gone past him. Rafik Avanesian. Okay. Still not really seen enough to know whether they're actually any good. Eeny. In it goes. McGee in that target man position. He's, he's not the tallest, but he got it. So Matt McGee getting a European goal for his technically new side, even though he's played the last few seasons for us on loan. We own him now. Back out it goes. This must be our, our highlight again. The real urgency there from Greg initially. Ooh, foul off the ball. Greg, go and get it in. Greg to Greg. And Eddie Greg from the pressing forward wants a 3 1. This is good news. I mean, it's obvious it's good news because we're winning. Winning would never really be bad news, would it? But. 
we get, I think, £215,000 for just playing in this round. I think it goes up to about 230 or something like that. It's not much more there if we play in the second round, regardless of whether we win or not. So if we put enough goals past them that we can comfortably get into the next round, we kind of double the money, not counting again ticket sales and stuff. Greg, oh, it bounced around a bit there. Some desperation there in that clearance. Yes, yeah, so about 215,000 is a little bit shy of what we spent on wages all of last year. Um, so this, these, these matches plus ticket sales, they did not go over the line. Um, this match plus ticket sales kind of covers our, our normal running costs, although our wages have gone up because we signed a couple more players on slightly higher than normal wages. Heaney being one of them. Eggs on his debut. That's one each for the strikers. Eggs has gone up and down with uh, Ballon and Millard. We've been desperate to get him for ages. We finally managed to, to pounce. That's why it's good to have um, a kind of like a, what do people call it online, like a shadow shortlist. This idea of who you're going to use to replace others, like having one or two for each position ready for when you can kind of strike and get them. McGee, 5 1. Okay. I'm starting to worry now that our goal bonuses might start to wipe out our prize money a bit. Maybe we can rest up a little bit. Again, another good long range goal. That makes me worried about Miller, to be honest. Hmm. Seven goals in the first half so far. Seven minutes left, so there's still time for us to score like another couple. I think I said it. In the last video, we need to try and make sure we become the best of the rest in the league so Europe becomes a regular thing for us. Eggs. Oh, the runner was there, but... Oh, good shots. That did look quite good. So McGee and Beggs are on a brace. And Greg needs to, to sort of catch up. On one hand, this makes me feel really optimistic for the domestic side of the season. On the other, I don't really know whether they're any good, like what their quality is. Is this the equivalent of us beating, like, McGee like gets his hat-trick in the first half? Is this the equivalent of us beating one of our amateur sides, like Kilmore Rec or Ards Rangers, who aren't even in, you know, the third playable tier here? And actually, maybe 7 2 is not really good, and we're going to be struggling. But I do feel like this, the squad is generally stronger. I think our keeper options are better. I think our striking options are good. We've got some proven strikers in there, even if we've not got O'Connor. We've got a bit of depth. We've got some interesting midfielders. I do feel very sad that Key is gone. Uh, yeah, carry on, everyone. Bring Heaney off for Devlin in a little while, I think. Let's see if we can advance on 7 2. Seven three. That's the thing. We're still conceding. Reasonably soft goals as well, but he's not been marked at all. Maybe Mackle should have been there. Mackle is complacent. I've overwhelmed them. That's not going to plan. Looks like they're on the attack now. Oh no, maybe we are. McGee. He's got four. 
Beautiful work by McGee. Alright, let's make some subs. McGee could come off from the target man, because Brown might be able to bag a couple if he's this bad. Devlin's going to come on for Healy. Dallas is going to come off for Mackle. I should know again, he's a bit risky playing all of our, our subs, but I want him to get a bit of game time. Nicely finished. Yeah, I think they might just be bad. Whilst we might have had a fortunate draw against them, I think whoever we play in the next round is not going to be this bad. Oh, Beggs got his hat trick on his debut. And it was not a bad strike. Promising for him in that he's getting in good positions from that false nine position. You can take players on. Terrible players, but you can still do it. 9-3. It's not what I was predicting. I was expecting maybe a nervy, you know, maybe a couple of goals. And that's about it. God, 9-4. I mean, there aren't many people here at Windsor Park watching this, but you definitely, you know, put your money's worth if you wanted to see some attacking football. There's 715 people in this, was it 16,000 seater? I can't remember what it was now. I mean, we, we could have fit everyone in Glen Road, it's just it didn't meet requirements. 9-4. Apparently we're very similar. We're not though, are we? That was a really good win. There we go. Um be able to see Glenhaven. 4 0. Linfield have lost. So the finish side. I don't know where Mondorf is. Luxembourg, okay. Um It's interesting, the um, coefficient for Northern Ireland has gone up, so from next year it's got the same number of places in Europe, but it's just one of them goes into the next round, I think. Right then, I'll be back for a second, I'll be back in a second for the second leg. And we're back for the second leg, there wasn't much that happened in between. Uh, there were some friendlies that had been scheduled, but I cancelled them because the assistant manager was going nuts and just trying to make us play like two matches in the sort of six days in between um the two legs which even though we've won the first leg by a reasonable margin i didn't think was the best best approach i'm not gonna make any changes other than to bring bingham on for brown give him the opportunity from the bench otherwise we'll go with this try and get them kind of bedded in to give mackle and heaney another chance to impress Beggs doesn't really need another chance to impress because we got a hat trick in the last match. Technically, now there's a Heaney because he got a, a goal plus like two assists or something like that. Nine four. I checked um, the finances after that last match to see how much money we made. Didn't really need to check it because we got told that we made a record amount, and uh, our record amount was eight grand. So by having sort of 715 people in the stadium last time we got eight grand, which was better than nothing. So just by being in this competition, we've made, I worked it out, 223,000, including the gate receipts. And by being in the next round, so assuming we you know, carry on, win, win overall and aggregate, um, we'd make, I'm estimating around 450 grand is enough to run the, the club wage wise for probably a season and a half that was terrible defending and keeping from a very deep set piece McVeigh the fault for that one okay get a bit bit closer four goals in it currently Unnecessary spin there by uh, Heaney and Beggs just knocks it over. I'm not going to use the obvious puns for any mischance 
chances for Begs. Not yet, anyway. Oh, that was bad as well. Karen. Karen has scored. Okay, so now it's 9-6 and it's only 3 in it. I don't want to see that again. I am going to have to shout at them, I? This is not a good showing. A trip to Armenia can't have been that bad. It's done this to us. Come on, Greg, get something in. Penalty? Yeah, there we go. Eddie Greg to step up and grab another goal for himself. He didn't get a hat trick in the last match. He scored, but he didn't get a hat trick. Second goal of the season for him. One in each leg against Chirac, so now it's 10 6. Don't often play aggregate games. Not had many games over two legs to play, but this is definitely the biggest score line we've had for a while. Go on, Murray. Pick that one up. Back we go. Heaney in. McGee. He's just lacking the height. He's not that natural target man, is he? Heaney at the back post. Back we go. Oh, McGee. Danced away from him. Heaney. McGee and Heaney have linked up pretty well in these past two games. But this time it's McGee serving it up for Heaney. Then he just danced past him. And it goes. So 11 6. Not quite outscoring them 2 to 1, but we're very close. Murray goes in. McGee. Now we're winning 3 2. We went down, but now we pulled it back. That should be a horrible blow for them just before half time. Yeah, they're getting complacent. I had to shout at them just a little bit. Room Bingham for Beggs, because Beggs was complacent and didn't get any better. We'll leave that for the moment. Free kick. Oh, I just assumed it was going to be a goal from that free kick. Mackle picked that one up nicely. Greg. McGee's not quite there. Go on, Greg. Bingham. Mickey just needs a bit. If that was O'Connor, O'Connor would have scored that. He wouldn't have scored maybe those other four goals that McGee got in the last match that were on the floor, but everything in the air I think he would have got. That might be the next piece of the puzzle. Piece of the puzzle, I should say, up front. Um... Just a really big target man. McGee's better with the ball on the floor than he is in the air. Gotta get that one out. Let's make some subs. He and he's gonna come off for Devlin. What next? Burn on for bar. There's McGee. Cut it back. Oh, Greg. He should have just gone first time. Should have just gone first time. Does feel a little bit greedy currently, wanting more goals, but. We are outscoring them 2 to 1. That's, that's enough, probably. Save some goals for later on. There's only 158 people here in uh, Armenia. They are real minnows, aren't they? I should not get carried away by this 12-6 aggregate win. Well, that's all right, isn't it? I wonder if we know who we're going to be playing against next. Oh, 
Well, that's another thing. The board in the Club Vision expects us to reach the second round, expects us to win in this very first round, even before we found out who we were against. Seemed a little bit much. Um, yep, yeah, got a 215. We're playing Sudova. Sudova Mary Jampol from, where did we say this was? Lithuania. Um, they have one player. Their goalkeeper, who looks like he might be good. Two, two, one wins against Vaduz. Vaduz, them, beat them. Um, I imagine we're probably going to lose against them, but that's all right because our bank balance looks okay. We were still expected to be in the red by the end of this season. Anyway, that's that's a bit depressing, isn't it? Um, there we go. We'll stop because this is a hugely long episode. We'll come back for the next. Thanks very much.